OpenAI just dropped a coding agent that actually runs in your own repo. This is bigger than any type of coding copilot update we've seen in a long time. In this video, I'll break down their new feature Codex, what it can do, how it works, the demos OpenAI shared, and what this means for the future of software engineering. Hey guys, I'm Matt Kuda. On this channel, I cover the latest AI news and coding tools. So whether you're a seasoned builder or someone looking to just get started coding, make sure you subscribe for the latest updates. All right, guys, let's jump into the release notes. This was announced by OpenAI yesterday, May 16th. And they described Codex as a cloud-based software engineering agent that can work on many tasks in parallel. Codex can perform tasks for you, such as writing features, answering questions about your code base, fixing bugs, and proposing pull requests for review. Each task runs its own cloud-based sandbox environment, important to note there, preloaded with your repository. So OpenAI had previously released Codex CLI, which ran locally on your machine. Um, this has been available for a few years ago and they've been making you know, improvements on it since, but now this is gonna run in the cloud. So it's gonna be a lot simpler to configure, simpler to not having to run a large language model on your own laptop. You can use the chat GPT UI and have it run in the cloud. So a lot of setup bonuses there. And Codex is its own model. Codex is powered by Codex 1, a version of OpenAI 03 optimized for software engineering. Um, you know, 03 is already great for engineering, all the OpenAI models are. Um, so now that they're saying it's optimized, it's gonna be crazy to see what this thing can actually crank open. It's trained using reinforcement learning on real world coding tasks in a variety of environments to generate code that closely mirrors human style and PR preferences. We'll see in the demo videos I show later, this is actually true. Um, I know sometimes when I code locally with models that will add non-human style things like excessive comments and just these weird loops and optimizations that no real coder would use and kind of lack human readability. So I can really attest that from what I've seen, this is working. And of course, PR preferences is huge too. It's gonna to be able to actually open a PR to your repo and not just make changes in your IDE that you have to click accept on and kind of have to context switch on back and forth to really understand. And as I note, we're starting to roll out Codex, the ChatGPT Pro Enterprise and Code Users today with support for Plus and EDU coming soon. I'm currently a plus user, so I don't have this feature today. And still, from what I've seen, a lot of pro users don't even have it. But once we get our hands on it, we'll for sure be making a hands-on video with that. But we still get a lot of context on how it works in this video. All right, so jumping into how it actually works, they have a description here in the docs. But this video put out by Greg and the team was a super good demo. Um, so a look at the interface. This is the codex. UI similar to chat GPT and they have this preloaded repo in their github that they can click into um, Then once into it this screen they actually have just some um, Preloaded tasks to do just to get things going so we can see the first one explain the code base to a newcomer What is the general structure important things to know pointers so you can see it's being great for entry-level engineers coming into a complex code base i know i would have loved to have that in my current job when i started and having no react experience i was super overwhelmed so having something like this to guide me and not have to waste a higher level engineer's time would be super efficient for the company another preloaded task is pick a part of the code base that seems important and find and fix a bug this is super interesting to me because of course, you know, right now in Cursor, you can control A, a file and say, hey, I need bugs in here and Cursor can do an okay job. But with this, what we're gonna see, it's gonna be able to search the entire code base, uh, has a huge context window, um, identify the important files, not just the files included in the um, chat completion request and fix bugs. We'll see that demonstrated and then finally, we have this one, go through the code base, find issues and propose one task to fix a typo, fix a bug, uh, comment, documentation, improve a test. So this task really just shows the variety of what this things can do. Um, comments for explanation, 
tests, which we'll talk about later, which is huge for this feature, um, and typo identification, which again goes to the human readability aspects that this feature can open. So clicking through, now we're going to see uh, as we can and fix them. Them typing out. This, I think this didn't matter. Let's see if it understands what's going to do. My instruction. And we can see it getting loaded into the task section down here. So skipping ahead into the video, now we're going to see how they actually request their own request here. This user is going to say, find as many typos and grammar mistakes as you can and fix them. So they click submit here and you can see um, all the tasks in parallel going down here, which is another crazy feature. Um, you know, with cursor, you're often limited to just one task at a time, have to see it, review the changes yourself, accept it. But with Codex, you can have multiple running at the same time. So think of it as a team of engineers collaborating and avoiding merge conflicts at the same time. So you can see, you know, they have the explain task here, uh, review for bugs, um, the fixed typo, all happening in parallel, which is pretty crazy. So once you click into a task, you get a full breakdown of the changes why they made the changes and often tests they include to verify that changes work and aren't just hallucinating. So we can see this task was to keep the code base maintainable and bug free. It worked for three minutes and the code gave a human explanation, um, several areas, avoid mutable, mutable default arguments. Okay, that's great. Um, gives a suggested task to improve it. Um, correct the spelling, it, it identifies a difference in a timeout constant, which you want to keep consistent across the repo, and then you can actually hover this little bracket icon to see the exact part of the code that it's referencing, I think is super cool. Um, Cursor should for sure have this. I know they show you the preview changes that they're making, but this is a really nice way to say, hey, you know, Here's the proof and here are the receipts. And then if you want a task to actually get ran, you could click the view task and then click the code button up here. And then that would send the task to run in the cloud, which is pretty amazing as it will have your context of your repo in GitHub, which lives in the cloud and it can do the PR off your laptop. So you can leave your laptop, close it, go to the beach, and we'll see the script running here for that agent to run your repo locally and iterate in agent mode to implement the task. Pretty crazy. And then to demonstrate the power of unit tests that Codex can generate, in this request, the user had an error with special characters in a file name. Codex was able to identify the fix, uh, make the fix, and then include a test called get diff special characters test. So now instead of just, you know, like I said earlier, hallucinating for a fix and saying, hey, like, this is a fix from what I read in Stack Overflow, it should fix it, but to actually provide the proof for it that it can run itself, verify it passes, and some of you can include in your repository so it never breaks again, is super game-changing. This, in my opinion, is what's going to set Codex leaps and bounds ahead of things like Cursor. You know, for, for this to be able to, this, in my opinion, is what's going to set Codex leaps and bound ahead of Cursor. For this to be able to run in the cloud, right, so you can leave the laptop, for this to be able to have its own test for the changes it made, the changes it's made are already good, better than the models that we previously had, and the tests that verify the changes, and then for it to run the test, you can see here you have the test, see the results, one of one passed, and then to be able to click this push button up here, add it to your repo, not only the bug fix, but the test, for this fix, so you'll have insurance that won't break again in the future. It's a good game. It's crazy, right? This might not be, you know, the thing that makes me quit cursor or manually coding IDEs right away, but where you can see where this is going, it's crazy. Um, it's going to completely shift software engineering. It's going to be a lot of, you know, instructing agents for tasks, just overseeing them, make sure they're doing it right. You know, in the beginning, you'll still have to have a decent understanding of, you know, the languages and what's going on, but like, I mean, loosely, right? With these tests, it'll be verified it's working. You can have trust. So this is absolutely crazy. And then just to continue in this demo, um, we'll see how they can open an MR with this button. Yeah, that's super cool. 
And then the rest of this video is showing off more examples of the task feature. But what I really want to show you is this outro by Greg, the president of OpenAI, talking about the future of Codex and how it can affect software engineering. Right, what you really want is you want a remote coworker with its own computer, but who can also look over your shoulder. And so you're there typing away, you're working some change, you're like, ah, I, don't, I want to go to lunch. Codex, can you finish this? It just takes it over seamlessly and, and runs it in the cloud. Or if you have a question about something or you want to pull down a change because your dependency isn't installed or something like that, it all just moves around totally, totally seamlessly. So it's a coworker, it's a intern you can delegate to, it's a mentor, it's a pair programmer, and all of these at once. And so our goal really is to help accelerate the useful work that is done to help it be so there's more software engineers in the world, so that there's more programming that is done uh, that is useful and, and able to move forward, move forward the world. So we're just so excited to see what you're going to do with Codex. Thank you all. So that was a pretty optimistic take by him, right? It says Codex can be your mentor. You know, someone working below you, working on the small bug fixes or improving documentation so that you can work on the bigger things. It can also be your coworker. You know, if you're building out a complex system that you need to flesh out and need someone to ask questions with you on the way, and maybe build out one half or you build out the other half, front end, back end, Codex can be that. And it can also be your mentor, right? Someone, if you're not super familiar with machine learning and you're building an app that needs it, um, Codex can be that person that guides you, walks you through it, um, and can validate the PRs you're opening and even <laughs> open PRs that are above your skill level. So super interesting thing. And then he says this will create more software engineers in the world, um, which I'm, I'm still like on the fence about it. I mean, <laughs> this will for sure you know, reduce the hiring needs that a lot of large companies need for software engineers. I mean, all these tasks previewed in the video um, can certainly supersede the productivity levels of junior engineers um, for a fraction of the cost. I mean, this is eventually gonna be available to uh, GPT plus users for 20 bucks a month, um, which is way less than the salary of a junior engineer. But I'm also pretty optimistic in the sense that like he said, it'll create more software engineers, engineers so more independent people can start building their projects. Like now I myself, if I wanna build a new fitness app in iOS and I don't have a lot of iOS experience, I can have um, Codex you know, start opening PRs for me in the background. You know, Hey, let's make the authentication feature. Let's build out the timers. Let's you know, build out a workout library. And I can do that while I'm learning iOS while I'm setting up the basics and that can run in the background with unit tests and be able to be my teacher, um, my coworker, and you know, a person below me fixing all the small stuff. So super exciting, thanks. Back to the docs, there was also this funny testament for a guy who talks about how it affects his on-call shift with how Codex can handle it for him. You'll get some sort of alert and you'll kind of look through the error logs. And you'll see, oh, hey, there's an error at this one particular part of the code base. And sometimes it's something I'm familiar with, but sometimes it's not. When the minutes and seconds matter in terms of responding to an issue, the first thing I'll do is just fire off that stack trace into Codex to understand where the issue is happening and see if it can fix it. Usually I'll... So that's super cool. I know at my company, when there's production issues on a major component of a website, it's all hands on decks to swarm and find it. Um, and like you said, every second matters, you know, when you have billions of customers, um, an hour of downtime versus a minute of downtime is huge. So to have Codex, you know, multiple Codex agents also helping you, um, find real production issues, you know, can scan your logs and stuff like that and propose an actual PR fix that you just have to click accept on can save companies a ton of money can ease the stress put on engineers that get paid in the middle of the night, like myself, and ruin my sleep schedule when um, you know a codex agent could be the first level of defense. So a cool use case I hadn't thought of. And then I think the last paragraph in the what's next section of the documentation really ties out this feature. Software engineering is one of the first industries to experience significant AI-driven productivity gains, opening new possibilities for individuals and small teams. While we're optimistic about these gains, we're also collaborating with partners to better understand the implications of widespread agent adoption on developer workflows, skill development across people, skill levels, and geography. This is just the beginning. We're excited to see what you build with Codex. And yeah, super agree with everything said there. It's gonna be crazy in a few years if IDE coding actually becomes a thing of past and it's all just you orchestrating your agents in the cloud, working on a repo built by agents. Um, it's like everyone's gonna be their own engineering manager for these AI software engineers, 
But honestly, not the worst thing. Again, it's going to 10x, 100x developer productivity. It's going to be able to catch production bu uh, bugs much more quickly. Um, on call won't be an issue and it'll enable people to build out their dreams of their applications and projects they've always wanted to build. You know, that was a huge thing with me when ChatGPT came out a few years ago. I was always intimidated to take on my own projects, but even just having that as being my co-pilot really gave me the confidence and the tools to build out projects I've always dreamed of building. So I really think people are sleeping the fact that this will allow people to flesh out their own business ideas create more jobs that way and really empower a more entrepreneurial mindset for builders. So let me know what you guys think about Codex. Are you excited to use it? Have you already tried it out? What's your experience? If you haven't got it yet, what's going to be the first thing you build with it? Again, I'm Matt Kuda. On this channel, I cover everything in AI news and tech tools. So make sure you subscribe for the latest updates. I'll for sure be making a video on Codex once it's in my hands. Thanks again.